Welcome back to the channel. We're picking up right where we left off with the XS400 build. In the previous episode, you saw me install the regulator rectifier and the solenoid in a custom configuration up here. But in this video, I'm gonna work on mounting the battery down below the swing arm utilizing the factory center stand mounts. So let's jump right in with making some, uh, some pieces to kind of get started on that bracket. I want to clean the inside of that tube. So this side here, you can see it's got a nice machine finish. So I did put this in the lathe and I did my end pass there. So our little bung insert slides in just how it should and I left that lip so it would have like kind of a positive engagement and we're gonna weld around this seam there. Then I can go ahead and measure the total desired width. I'll go ahead and get this thing cut down exactly how it needs to and then Weld that side in too. Thank you. 
That'd have been sweet if we would have left that longer. Hmm. Not a big deal. So this little lip right here is actually impeding the gas flow from the lens. A little bit tricky of a seam to weld. You need to kind of do it a little bit more vertically. Let's see how that goes. Pretty well. All right, you saw me weld on this little tab here, and then I went ahead and just finished the welds on the bottom of this section, as well as the front, because we need to kind of finish this thing up and get the rear hanger on for our battery strap. So this is pretty simple. There's no exact measuring or anything like that. You just have to go by feel. So what we do, our battery fits in here. And of course, our strap fits just like that. And then as we kind of pull it over on the back side, you guys can see this. And then we pull it over on the back side and then build in uh, a little bit of tension. It doesn't have to be anything crazy because you gotta remember, you still have to be able to pull this thing down and, and get it off. But having a little bit on there is just what we need. So I'm going to grab my marker I'm going to grab my marker. Ah, okay. We'll build in that tension, get it about right where we want it, and then I can just put another mark on the two pieces of steel. 
just to kind of get me in the ballpark. And then now we can, you know, clamp it down where we want and then go ahead and weld this thing on. So that will sit on there about like that. Once we have that on, then uh, I, I do want to build in some sort of support to keep the battery from sliding this way. It's really unlikely that it will ever move, but I would just, I would rather be safe than sorry because the chain is going to be passing right here. Now, the battery physically cannot move further that way towards the right side of the bike because the mechanism for the, uh, the rear brake is right there, so it's, it has no clearance anyway. So it can't move that way. I'm not really concerned about, you know, putting any kind of blocker over there. But I do want to do something on this side. So I want to try to make it thin and compact. But, you know, it's going to be this, using the same kind of processes that I'm already showing here. So probably not going to really fill much of that. But anyway, I'm going to clamp that on. We'll get it, we'll get it welded and this will be a, a lot closer to being done. Fun fact, I can actually weld, can't get the thing around me, I can weld pretty decently left-handed. I can also play pool left-handed. Taught myself how to play pool left-handed so there'd be no unreachable shots on the table. Okay, I had a little dab, it wasn't as pretty. Still pretty decent though. Clamps on clamps on clamps. So I'm trying to weld this piece on and I need it to be uh, level with the other tab, but to do that I have to clamp this piece to the main bracket to make sure it's spaced correctly and then this fits on another piece that's clamped underneath. If that makes any sense. So to get this clamped onto that, I have that block there. So those are held together and then this piece is clamped onto there, making it nice and square. In total that was a rhyme, so that was a win. It. I can only get like one to maybe two dabs in in a section. That's how you waste a lot of argon. All right. All right, assuming I don't add anything else to this as far as uh, like something to keep it from clocking in the bike, this thing's done. So I just added that center piece right there. Sorry. Added that center piece and that is just acting as a little bit extra support since this is just welded at two points right here. You know, even though the battery's light and it has a strap holding it over here, this is just gonna add a little bit more rigidity to keep it from vibrating apart.
So this thing fits together really nice. Battery fits in there just as, you know, as we made it to fit. And we have that support on the bottom. And then, there it is, the strap. A little bit easier to put on from this way. Pull it over and loop her down. So, that's not going anywhere. So of course there's no shielding around this battery. And uh, in my opinion, that's still okay. Yeah, it might get a little bit dirty. Um, a comment that I see a lot is just, you know, like what about the mud guards and stuff like that? And what about mud? And I, I had one the other day, what if you're driving through floods? I, you guys, here in the US, we have weather reports and we have days where it doesn't rain. So these things are really built as fair weather bikes. Now, if I'm building an adventure bike, it's going to be a whole different scenario. I'm going to build in, you know, protect more protection from the elements and uh, and things like that. But, you know, for a little street going bobber cafe racer, you know, again, it's going to be a fair weather bike. These things are never our primary transportation. You know, you can't I can't be building a bike and not have anything to ride to work, so to speak. So um, just keep keep that kind of stuff in mind. So. Yes, in short, I could have built maybe like a big, you know, sheet metal enclosure or something like that, but for, for me, I just don't feel like it's necessary. I've been having fun lately working with more, you know, like bent rod and stuff like that. It's just, it's more fun for me to make. And uh, yeah, I like utilizing the area under the bike. So if we do choose to add some protection, I might be able to put like a little mini inner fender or some kind of debris shield in front, you know, in between the tire and the battery itself, just to help keep, you know, keep it a little bit more clean. But we're not going down gravel roads, we're not doing, we're not going through mud, and we're not going through floods, so just, yeah, it's only gonna get so dirty. So keep that in mind. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing mounted to the bike and we'll move to our next project. Thank you. 